Utopia by b 2 b It is 14 songs, 45 minutes long, serving it up Gary's way as always on this podcast. With a mispronunciation um, at some point. Always, always, especially with B2B. You know, I could never say anything right with her. And, 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 uh, and this is like one of your favorite artists that you brought onto Audio Face mm-hmm. to kind of like spotlight. And uh, you led a Biba Doobie bonus episode that we did um, that's available for members. We went into how she went from like kind of unknown to blowing up on TikTok and like through a remix and then still making music that is like, okay, I'm not going to try to make TikTok hits. I'm still going to try to push my she own sound forward. Own. Yeah. And we've been talking very recently about how a lot of women in indie are doing this sort of grunge callback sound from the 90s that Biba Doobie did in her debut album, Fake It Flowers, that we were Yeah. She yeah. kind of, I want to say she necessarily started it, but her record is, is like, really or, or when she, she didn't invent it she up, perfected it yeah, yeah yeah that's actually a very very good way of saying it um jai paul of her era um <laughs> but with uh her second record you know the second record curse as we like to say the curse. um she actually tries to expand a little bit of her sound within it it is still and that's gonna be my my, my one critique of of her is i want it I'm left still wanting more because it's still you still have that in that '90s throwback sound. You still have a lot of of those influences. It's not nearly as grunge heavy as before because she actually branches out and tries to do different sounds within like '90s theme ish esque. You know, with like '90s R and B, '90s even some hip hop alternative, and then even early aughts alternative, early aughts pop records and stuff. So you can get, hear those influences and everything. So I was joking to myself. I'm like, okay, what else? Is she, I guess she. All right, she's gonna. She's got the grunge. Now is she gonna make like Kid A, and then is she gonna make Amnesiac, and then is she gonna make Hail to the Thief? <laughs> yeah, like she, if she's going through the tens here, like at what point is her Coldplay era? At what point is her like Muse era? Um, <laughs> All these things I'm joking about, but all these things I'm sure would be pretty cool. Like if we got like a, a little like EP here or there, um, I'd be very down. I mean, I'm telling you, if she makes like a, a, a Strawberry Sween style Coldplay song, I would like fucking be all over it. Because the thing with with B two to B and something that I don't think a lot of artists are chasing but can't do is trying to make a throwback sound stay fresh. That is an issue with grunge because you're very limited in the way that it sounds. But with a lot of the ideas, because 90s isn't just grunge. There's a shit ton of sounds in the 90s. You have, you know, your Spice Girls. You have a lot of hip hop. You have R&B. You have, you know, the, the emergence of alternative rock. You have the emergence of electronics coming in. You have EDM starting up. You have a lot of different sounds in there and into the early aughts that you can play around with. And she starts to do in here. Um, so, example, the first two tracks. So, I don't know, the cult song I want at the beginning is is okay, but then um, ten thirty six is the only real like like certified grunge hit and stuff where you hear that and I was like, all right, it's this classic B two two B, but it's you know nothing too crazy, but it still it also starts to play off with some of like early aughts like no doubt sounds and everything that I don't mind and I was like, okay, so she's branching out trying different stuff, but like around like. Um, See You Soon, Ripples, the fourth and fifth tracks. That's where she gets this interesting dreamy sound that she goes throughout the record trying to do. Of her. It's like being a trippy-ish sound of making this nice shoegazy-ish sound that um, I think she, it suits her vocals, and especially with the, the vocal effects that she has on here. I really like the way that's done, and you feel like you're just floating it down. I have to look if that's what her intended effect was, but it sounds like you're like stuck in a river or you're floating or something like that. Like a trance kind of, of some kind. Yeah, a trance. I think that's good. Or even a dream. Um, but within there, like towards the middle of the record, you get like these nice, almost like R&B sounding is tracks, which I was like, well, this is interesting. R&B mixed yes. with alternative, like example, the perfect pair. Yes. The six song. I was like, a little Bieber Doobie back. Bossa Nova. I know, right? Exactly. I heard that and I was like, oh my God, yes, this is what I wanted. I wanted her to explore more. And this is what we get. We get these nice little things that she's having fun. But it's the thing too that's impressive is 
it still sounds good within this record. It still has that dreamy sound and whatnot with it, where you're maybe you're having a dream, a dream where you're in Argentina or Brazil or something, and you just got these nice bossa nova beats. And then you have like Broken CD right after it, of which is even more airy and stuff, and almost a lot of ambient sounds in there, which I like. And so. also, like, what a like zeitgeisty late 90s early 2000s song of like broken cd because there's a lot of motifs in there about like things being on repeat and stuff like that mm-hmm. and uh i haven't lived through that era <laughs> yeah i i remember having my cd player and like breaking a bunch of shit because i did not understand and of course what kid would that running with a cd player is not good idea <laughs> so i i used to have these clear plastic um CD protectors that yeah. had like a little orange seal on them and you'd clip them onto your CD to try to see if that would scratch the paper instead of scratching the CD so you wouldn't get stuck repeating a song and everything. This shit never worked <laughs> in my yellow Walkman, but you know, we had to try back in the day. Yeah, that, that sounds like one of the ultimate sounds good doesn't works of the era. <laughs> exactly. That's about, tell me you're a, you're a 90s baby without telling me you're a 90s baby right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but, but before we get too much into deep nostalgia of that, but you, you do get what. So we were coming into this record going, okay, Biba Doobie, you've kind of pioneered this grungy sound. A lot of other artists are copying it. Few are really kind of being able to transcend from it. I would definitely give a shout out to Wet Leg this year because they are like for f- sure. phenomenal in indie. Um, but even Snail Mail, too, is a, another great artist as well. And, oh, for yeah. sure. And like we even recently talked about um, Men I Trust and a couple other other. Mm-hmm. Indie artists that are really like giving us something that isn't just the same bedroom pop, but also isn't the same sort of like grunge indie callback type thing. It, it, we, we're getting some range here, which is great. But yeah, that's the thing is that we wanted Biba Doobie of all people to show us range, to show us something different. And she's managing to do both, where we are getting range once you get deeper into the meat and potatoes of the album, so to speak. Um, but you're also getting, like you said, Sean, She's able to do these different things and different sounds and have fun with them, but it doesn't throw off the record at all. It doesn't throw mm. off the flow of it. It's really nice. Yeah. So, example, like right after Broken CD, you have Talk, which is more of like a grunchiest sound, but you know, it had been five tracks between your grunchiest sounds. So it's fine. Love Song, Pictures of Us, or it was a little bit slower. And, um, Nice little shoegazy sounds with some of that too, which I absolutely love. Then you get Fairy Song, which is this nice little like 90s pop song, which I like. But it reminds me a little bit of The Birthday Party by the 1975, of how it's done. Of this nice blend between, you know, 20, 2020s, the 20s sounding um, alt rock mixed with some throwback sounds. And I really liked Fairy Song. Um, and this is telling me where, like, she's really branching out because she's trying to figure out where she wants to go within her own voice and everything and her own sound. But she's also knows that she already has a sound of being, she's only like 21 or something, but still trying to stay true to herself as an artist while exploring that. And this is the perfect blend of it because you still get, you know, some of your sounds that your, your Gen Zs will love and everything, but then you get a lot of stuff that us... Um, reviewers and people who are fans of her work and fans of her music um, want as well of just branching out. So overall, I think it's a fantastic record, a fantastic second record. I was very worried going in because some of the singles I heard and stuff, I was like, Ugh. yeah, I'm like, please don't I, give me 45 minutes, but just grunge. And it's not. Yeah, I like See You Soon in the context of the record very much. And I also do like, it's almost mm-hmm. Beba Doobie taking a little bit of uh take from trap almost where you, you you put your like crowd pleasers like in the beginning of the album you're like okay we know what you're here for let's just like offload this yeah and then where most trap artists fail is they just like okay let's just more of that shit let's just keep doing more of that for like 25 songs more pump up those numbers those are rookie numbers culture five 80 songs long <laughs> the end of audio face but um no instead of that you get a thoughtful project where you get range and variety and depth and mm-hmm. i wouldn't say this is like the perfect album construction per se there's some no, things that maybe no. like could be moved around or could be you know like turned into an ep so to speak but Really, like for a 45 minute project in 2022, I felt like it used maybe 40 of that minutes pretty perfectly. Yeah. And I, I, like, last little thing of the actual record, the last track of You're, you're Here, That's the Thing, I think is a great ender. 
because yeah. it's not sounding like the rest of the record per se because it sounds like this is her really just making a song and not having any influences not having any uh, any other sounds in mind of just I want to create something and it's a beautiful ending track of it of like wow okay she can do a lot there's still a unlimited ceiling of what she can create now so I mean, it leaves me very excited for what else we're going to get so yeah damn good for a second record for an artist who's very young and you know has the the, the blessing and the curses of of a blowing up on a song that she was featured on and having all these different pressures on her now and still knocks out of the park. It's very good. Yeah. Um, BBDB can barely do any wrong. And another one albums like this and she's going to be like one of those just like indie giants of like she just like owns 100%. the genre. Yeah. Um, 100%. Arbitrary Scale this week. Um, I definitely need to remember that quick one because it was like really good whatever I came up with off my head. But like um, old YouTube memes. I'm going to mm. give this the old chocolate rain. God damn it. It's a good one though. I, sh- I should have said it before. I was going to say it's going to be a young chocolate rain because it's us moving away from the microphone like that. <laughs> <laughs> Some stay dry and others feel the pain. Chocolate rain. <laughs> It's like making sure you don't breathe into the mic, which is, you know, there's, there's all kinds of like mic etiquette and radio etiquette that we just totally blow through for better or worse on this podcast. But, um, 100%. it's my keyboard next to my mic. I'm like, I don't give a fuck my podcast. God damn it. Um, amazingly, it's not getting picked like nowhere near as much as before. I haven't heard your keyboard since we got the new mic. Um, it's, it's because this damn sure mic, dude, it's the best part. The mic is about six feet closer to the, to the keyboard it's i need to show you a picture it's like on top of the keyboard 